the first thing we'll talk about in this chapter is all sorts of properties of exponents. Um, there are a bunch of different properties that you need to be aware of, and we'll just walk through each of them. However, you'll probably need to come back to this section another time or two, just because there are a lot of them. The first one's called product of powers. So let's say you have a to the m times a to the n. What you're going to do is you're going to say a to the m plus n. So in a real example, let's say you have 3 to the 6 times 3 to the 2nd. What that really means is 3 to the 8th, because you get 3 to the 6 plus 2, which is 3 to the 8th. Let's say you have x to the 4th times x to the 6th. Your answer is going to be x to the 4 plus 6, or x to the 10th power. So when you multiply two like bases together, like a times a or x times x, you will add up the exponents. The second example is when you take a power to another power. So let's say you have a to the m power, and you take that to a power n. This, in this situation, you will multiply the exponents together, a to the m times n. So in a real example, let's say you have x to the third to the eighth power. And really what that means is x to the third times x to the third times x to the third times x to the third eight times. But you don't need to write this out. Now you would add all these together because you know when you multiply them together you add. But you can just multiply three times eight and you'll know you have x to the 24th power. One more example of this would be 2 to the 5th power squared, and all that means is 2 to the 10th power, which is equal to 1024. This rule also applies if you have two different things inside of parentheses. So let's say you have x squared times y to the 3rd power, and that's taken to the 5th power. What you're going to do is multiply each of those exponents by the 5, and you'll get x to the 10th y to the 15th. Moving right along, I'm really trying to make these videos as short as possible. Um, let's talk about what happens when you have a negative exponent. And sorry if my writing is a little sloppy today. The pen on my tablet stopped working, so I'm having to use my finger. So we have x cubed times x to the se negative 7. Of course, when you multiply two exponents together, you will add the exponents, add them, and you'll get x to the negative 4. Now, anytime you have a negative exponent, what that means is it's on the wrong side of a fraction. You need to put it on the bottom. x to the negative 4 really means x to the negative 4 over 1. So you'll flip that around. You'll say 1 over x to the negative 4. That's your answer. And now that exponent is not negative anymore. Another example of this is maybe if you see something like 7 to the negative 4. Of course, what that really means is 1 over 7 to the 4th power. And you could evaluate that as well. A final exa example of this is maybe something where you have 1 over a negative exponent, like 1 over 2 to the negative third power. What that's really screaming at you to do, it's saying, hey, I'm a negative exponent. I'm on the wrong side of the fraction. Put me on the top. And so what that really means is 2 to the third power over 1, or just 2 to the third power. So if you see a negative exponent, it's if it's on the top, move it to the bottom. If it's on the bottom, move it to the top. Something else you need to know about is anything to the power of 0, so a to the 0, is equal to 1. 3 to the 0 equals 1. 10 to the 0 equals 1. This fuzzy koala to the 0 power equals 1. The next rule we'll talk about is the quotient rule, and all it says is a to the m over a to the n equals a to the m minus n. In a real-world example, like x to the 7th over x to the 4th, it says 7 minus 4, and you're left with x cubed. And another example, let's say the bigger number is on the bottom, so t cubed over t to the ninth. What this says is 3 minus 9, t to the negative 6, which really means 1 over t to the 6, because the negative sign is telling you it needs to go in the bottom. But you could just look at this and see, okay, there's 6 more t's in the bottom than on the top, so what you're going to be left with is 6 t's on the bottom. But, you know, following the formula, you'll subtract 3 minus 9, get negative 6, then move it to the bottom, just like this. Let's say you start out with negative exponents, like 6 over negative 3, 
6 over negative 6. The first thing you want to do is flip those around because as soon as you see a negative exponent, the first thing you do is put it on the right side of the equation. So the negative 6 goes on the top, and this negative 3 gets moved to the bottom. Now you can subtract those and say what we're left with is 6 to the third, and 6 to the third is 216. All right, let's say we have a really complicated example like x to the third, y to the negative 2z, all over y to the fourth, z to the negative 4. The first thing you should do is move the negative exponents to where they go. So x cubed stays on the top. That y to the negative 2 goes to the bottom. So we'll move that down there. We move the negative 2 down there, so we have this 4 plus that 2. We have 6 y's on the bottom. The z to the negative 4 goes to the top, and now we have 5 z's on the top. And that's our answer. All right, just one more example with the quotient rule. I know there's a lot, but there's a lot of different things they could ask you. So b cubed over b to the 6. Let's say all of that's negative 2 power. That negative 2 needs to get distributed to both of those. So we get b to the negative 6 over b to the negative 12. Then we're going to flip those signs because if it says negative, it's yelling at you to put it on the other side. So b to the 12 over b to the 6. Subtract those, 12 minus 6, to get b to the 6. And that's your final answer. The last thing you need to know from this section is scientific notation. And I really wanted to talk to you guys about locusts, so that's what we're going to do. So it says a swarm of locusts may contain as many as 85 million per square kilometer. 85 million. And cover an area of 12,000 square kilometers. 12,000 square kilometers. So kilometers. Or sorry, 1,200 square kilometers. And it says how many locusts are in such a swarm. So there's that many in this area. So we're going to multiply those two numbers together. So what this really is is 8.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, times 10 to the 7th power, times 1.2 times 10 to the 3rd power, 1, 2, 3, 1.2 times 10 to the 3rd power, you multiply the numbers in front together, and you add up those exponents because they're being multiplied together, so like we talked about before. So what we're going to get for an answer, we're going to get 10.2 times 10 to the 7. However, this number has to be between 1 and 10 to be in proper scientific notation. So we're going to move that decimal even one more place, and we're going to get 1.02 times 10 to the 8th power.